So now we consider one more application of our previous lemma that we have solved about this priority of, I mean, existence of max diffem with certain size can be bounded by roughly Poisson distribution. And we also prove this bound on the existence of this fem with certain size also bounded by this mu to the s over s factorial. And we want to consider the application <coughs> about counting representation of an integer by sum of several other integer. So what we want to do is we have a set S which is a subset of natural numbers. And we want to express some number n as some of elements of S. So there are some well-known examples regarding this setup. For example, if S is 1, 2, 4, 8, 2, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 5, so term sums of 2, I mean powers of 2, then it is known that, uh, I mean, it's easy to see that the every n can be expressed by the sum of the elements of S some of the distinct elements of S in a unique way, which is the binary representation. <coughs> and also it's known that if we consider square, then it's known that uh, every natural number can be expressed as the MOS4 sums, I mean, sums of MOS4 elements in this set S. And also, if you consider S as a whole prime number, and Goldbach's conjecture says that uh, every even number can be expressed as the sum of two elements of S. So now, what we want to show is that uh, I mean in Regarding this theme, we want to consider one problem is asking is there any S such that uh, let's write it in this way let f of S of n be the number of <coughs> x comma y with x plus y is n say x and y are distinct element in s and we want to ask is that is there any s such that uh, f of s n is somehow predictable of course i mean in general i mean whatever s is the exact computation of this f sub s of n can be difficult unless it is a somewhat trivial case like s is all natural number or something so we want to show that uh, there are um, if s is all natural number then obviously this fn sub s is you can take uh, 1 n minus 1 2 n minus 2 and uh, n over 2, n over 2. So it's n over 2. But we want to find uh, somewhat much sparser set where we are currently considering about uh, only sum of two numbers. So we want to show that uh, there are somewhat more sparser set whose f value is again somewhat predictable. So, 
What is this in 1956 show is that there exists S, which is a subset of natural number, and constant C1 and C2, so that the following whole large M, we have C1 log n, the fn, let's just forget the subscript s whenever, I mean, is it clear from the context. Then we can actually <coughs> find the subset s and two constant, so that f of n is between c1 times log n and c2 times log n. So this is somewhat predictable. This is what we want to show, and for that we collect a tool, which is called Borel Cantelli Lemma. So let B1, B2, B3, and be the list of infinite events whose probability, if you sum up the probability of those events, then that's finite. Then, what we know is with probability 1, there exists an n0 such that bn is fourth for all and bigger than n0. <coughs> if you think about this, Summation of probability is finite, meaning that uh, if you consider I mean, n from n0, let's say x, from x to infinity, probability b n. If you consider this, this is the uh, I mean, upper bound on the probability that uh, at least one event from x to infinity occurs. And this actually goes to zero. This series converts meaning that uh, if we increase this x, then this decreases, and it actually goes to zero. So intuitively, I mean, we can kind of understand that uh, I mean, if this condition holds, then as x goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So it's intu intuitive that uh, at some certain point, I mean, None of the events after that happens. So we collect this lemma, which is well known, and we use this to prove this theorem first. And we will actually not use Poisson paradigm on to prove this theorem, but the, we will later generalize this to, I mean, more general function. So instead of considering sum of two numbers here, we can also consider sum of three numbers or sum of four numbers. In general, sum of k numbers. And in those cases, we can find the similar set S. And we will show that for the sum of three numbers case. <coughs> so let's prove this two sum case first. So, how do we do? Again, we want to make some random choice. We want to construct a subset S of this natural number set. So for each number, we will decide whether to add it to S or not. But we cannot uniformly add it. It will be too dense. So what we do is for each x, we add x to this random set s with probability px, which is minimum of, say, square root of log x over x times 10 or 1 in independent way. So, 
I mean, adding or not x does not affect, I mean, whether we add or not y. So consider this. I mean, this the choice of this number is that if you consider n, how many ways to choose x and y such that whose sum is n? There are n way. I mean, n over two way. You match up one and negative one. I mean, n minus 1, 2 and n minus 2, 3 and n minus 3, and so on. So, if we consider the probability that this is here, both of them are in S, both of them are in S, and we add them together, then that's expected number of representations of n. So, for n, f of n is actually a random variable with the expectation it's actually half times summation of x plus y equal n. So we forget the order and we multiply px and py and s together. Because our goal is to make this fx as a uh, log n, some constant times log n, then there are n terms, and we, on average, we want to make it so n terms, each of them is, I mean, roughly, we want to, we want each of them to be this, which is a multiplication of two numbers, so each of them, we want them to be roughly log n over n to the, I mean, square root. So that motivates this choice. Then as long as x and y are not too small, so x at least epsilon n, y at least m epsilon n, then this number is some constant times this, each of them. So multiplying together is more or less log n over n. So which is what we are aiming for. So that motivates this choice of px. And we can actually show that that choice was right by computing this expectation. And this expectation is actually if you just do some calculus, then you can show this is more or less this which is like uh, 50 pi plus 3 log 1 times log n. <coughs> so how can you show this? So this is actually, if you compute this, you can, so, you can write this as uh, the following. So you just take the epsilon to 1 minus epsilon. So consider x and y, both at least epsilon n case. Then what does that become? This is uh, log x, x, log y, y. But both of them are at least epsilon n, then the upper part, I mean, log epsilon n is log n plus log epsilon, log n plus log 1 minus epsilon. You make the computation, then the, if epsilon n is, epsilon is some <coughs> small number, which is, I mean, much bigger than 1 over n, say, then, I mean, the upper part is more of a log n, so you can kind of pull this out. And you have to still compute the, this and this part. Say one minus, n minus x, n minus x. 
But uh, if you think about this, this is what in this case we have this two, and it's at most. So we know that both priorities at most one. So this is at most one. So if you consider the later part. Uh, no, this is m most one. So if you consider the first part, this is bounded by square root of log n over x 10. But this function, this function is also upper bounded by, say, x to the half, negative half, plus epsilon, uh, let's use different letter, delta. So what's this? And more or less what's this? If you compute that, give me a moment. If you actually compute that, then uh, you take the integration, then it's x half plus delta, we value from 0 to epsilon, then epsilon to the half plus delta. So this goes to 0 as epsilon go to 0. So you can actually show that uh, this part is main term and less of the part is the little of 1 times log n. And you do the, I mean, proper computation, then we can actually, you can actually show this. <coughs> so for fixed then, this holds. And for this fixed then, what do we know? All pairs x, y with x plus y equal n are actually disjoint. So n, if you pair n and n minus 1, 2 and n minus 2, and so on, then they are all disjoint. So both of them in S, both of them in S, both of them in S, those events are all independent. And we can actually consider a random variable x1, x2, and xn over 2, indicating the this is a event where this both of them are in there, then we say 1, otherwise it is 0. Both of them are in there, then 1, otherwise it is 0. And we sum them up, then that actually counts the number of representation. So f of fn is summation of this xi. And with this setup, because they are all independent random variable, we can apply Chernoff. Then by Chernoff, If you say priority that uh, this f of n is deviated from its expectation by 0 0.9 mu is at most 2 times e to the negative 0 0.9 mu square over say 4 mu which is more than 2 times e to the negative 0 0.1 mu but uh, with this choice if you put it in and this is smaller than say n to the negative 1.1. 1 .1. <coughs> so here we take negative 1.1 on the exponent because we only need one number rather than one here. Because if you sum this up, then this is positive, I mean finite. Then we can apply Borel Cantelli lemma. So, if this happen, then f of n is smaller than five pi plus little one times log n, and f n is all bigger than fifty pi uh, ten times no ninety pi zero point nine ninety five pi. Uh, 
Är det en, en? Så. We take she won as a bit, I mean, number a bit smaller than that, which is 4 pi. C2 will be the number a bit bigger than that, which is 100 pi. And let Bn be the event that Fn is either smaller than C1 log n or Fn is bigger than C2 log n. One of these holds be the Bn, the probability that the Bn happens for and 1 to infinity is this and most this summation which is finite. So by the Borel Cantelli lemma with probability one we know that there is n zero such that Pn fails for all n at least n zero. So we do this random experiment then with probability 1, we actually get a, I mean, random set S. And that S has a property that, uh, I mean, there exists N0, so that uh, every integer N larger than N0 have the F value between C1 and C1 log N and C2 log N. So which is exactly what we wanted to prove. So now we want to consider more general term. So let's say that for given S, we write G sub G of N be the G sub S N be the number of representations N equal X plus Y plus G with x, y, g in s, and x, y, g in increasing way. So they are different. So we want to show that the uh, similar statement for this, this threesome. And of course we can define similar concept for k-sum. But and the similar statement actually holds for general k sum, but uh, we will only prove for three sum statement. So there exists a set F and two constants C1 and C2, such that again for all sufficiently. large n, we have that this gn is between c1 log n and c2 log n. So we do similarly as before. Now what we do, again we want to consider random subset s of natural number. Similarly as before, I mean, we actually write down n as a summation, I mean, expected number of f n as a summation of this probability. But now we want to do the similar thing. We want to write the expectation of g n in terms of summation of p n. That actually motivates how we can define p sub x. So for each natural number, we again add x to s in independent way, independently and random with probability p sub x, again okay, minimum of some say large constant times log x over x squared to the one third. And 
also we have to make sure that uh, it's not so high say half <coughs> so for smaller values of x it could be bigger than one which is not good so we already artificially put this for some large number m then similarly as before we can actually compute this mu which is expectation of g n let's say n is fixed which is summation of over all x y g you add px times py times pg then again similar as before you can compute again similarly as before we can take care of the boundary case when x is very close to 1 or very close to 0 y is very close to 0 or 1 those cases we can actually compute the integral which actually go to 0 as the interval here gets smaller say yeah this interval gets smaller than the integral goes to zero so it only constitutes to the little one term then we can actually show that uh, this is the integral that you have to compute then it's some more or less some constant times log n you can prove this And when any m is large, you can also make sure that k is large. So now what we want to do is we want to use the previous lemma regarding maximum disjoint family and disjoint family. <coughs> For that, what we have to measure is this delta, which measures the dependency over the events and mu sub s, which is uh, lower bounded by this mu minus s mu. So we want to show that f mu s and mu are more or less close, and this delta is small. So this delta measuring dependency of the events are we consider the pair x plus y plus g is n and x plus y prime plus g prime is n so again we want to consider the these two events which are not disjoint if we have x y g and x prime y prime g prime these number six numbers are all different then all three of them are in S and all three of them are in S, those events are independent. And those independent events are not counted when you measure this delta. So you want to consider the case where one are intersecting. So here we don't I mean put any ordering on the X and, and Y and G, so we can assume that X is the one that intersects. Then, roughly how many such pairs are here? You can choose n with x with n choices, and y with n choices, and y prime with n choices, so n cube choices. Once you choose this, g and g prime are automatically determined because their sum is n. So there are n cube terms, and this summation of, I mean, this multiplication of five numbers. Here is more or less n to the minus say 10 over 3. So this is roughly x to the minus 2 over 3, right? Plus 3 over 1. Again, I mean, 
we can so this is only true when x and y and g are not too small but uh, you also can consider the case where one of them is small if one of them is small then we let's say i mean x is small then number of choice of y and y prime are only n square and you can actually compute that uh, this doesn't contribute much <clears throat> and also consider y and g, g are small then i mean you can also sh show that uh, those terms are small then this is actually the main term which is root of 1 because this 10 over 3 is bigger than 3 so delta is small and now we want to consider this mu sub s for specific s, right? And what s we want to take is that similar to before, we consider s and most 3 mu, which is we know more or less log n times some constant. Then, what mu s is the u you fix x, y, c, which sums up to n. So you, you fix representations 1 and 2 and so on, s representations. And you consider all, I mean, all events which does not intersect this. Meaning that uh, which does not use any of x, x, i, y, i, g, i. So which is exactly the, I mean, minimum. So we choose this representations so that the uh, such summation of the probability of events are minimized. That's the definition of mu s. So this is the minimum possible summation of px, py, pj, where the sum is over 4x, y, g with x plus y plus g equal n that does not intersect with a set of given S representation. So what do we know? S is some constant times log n, so theta of log n. So we actually count the number of representations that use this and use this, use this. Then 3s times, once we fix this, the number of, I mean, x1. And we want to find the two more number which sums up to n. The such choice is at most n. So we have and most these terms which intersect so that much is subtracted from mu but this many terms each of them are more or less log n over n square over one third then i mean you multiply three of this then it's more or less one over square root one over n square and you multiply this number then this is small so we actually know that mu of s and mu are more or less same it's not even this this is mu plus little of one uh, yes little of one 
So, now as before, what do we know? We can consider the J maximum disjoint family or disjoint family. Here, disjoint family means collection of events that happen, which are not intersecting, so which are independent of each other. So we count all the triple, which sums up to n, and they don't use the same number. Then, if we let P be a Poisson, P be the Poisson distribution with average view, then what do we know? The probability that there exists maximum disjoint family J with a size small than 1 minus epsilon mu is at most 1 plus 0, 1 times the probability that the Poisson distribution is more smaller than 1 minus mu, 1 minus epsilon times mu, which is, I mean, we are exactly using this lemma. So here, this part is this and because this is small little one and this is small little one so they own this converts it to one plus little one and this part is same which is And again, the this probability is also at most one plus little one times the probability that the Poisson distribution. Probability that uh, again, if s is bigger than three mu, we just use the probability for this fem, we use this upper bound. And here, because s is at least three mu, so this is more or less. I mean, upper bound is by this. And again, mu is k log n, k is big enough. So if you know this, then this is now, I mean, smaller than n to the minus, say, 2 or some number, any number bigger than 1. So this also is little of n to the minus say two. That comes from the choice of k. So if we make sure that k is some large constant, then we can get this. So you add this probability, then we can actually check that the, I mean, let's say pn is the event that this j that exists max this fem of size 1 minus epsilon mu or 1 plus epsilon mu then we can check the summation of probability of bn is finite so with probability 1, what do we know? There exists n0 such that no bn 
happens for n a less than zero. So this implies that uh, there exists C1 and C2 such that for all n bigger than n0, there exists a max disfem j of size between c1 log n and c2 log n. Let's say c prime, c1 prime, c2 prime. This is with priority 1. So when we choose s at random, then priority 1, with priority 1, we now we have s. Our s has this property that uh, there exists n0 so, so that uh, any number n larger than s. Once we fix n, now we count the, I mean, triples, which sums up to n. And out of those all triples, we choose a maximum disjoint family. So family of triples that doesn't intersect each other. And it is maximum with respect to, to that as, I mean, aspect. Then there exists at least one maximum disjoint family satisfying this condition for all n. Now we want to convert this size of a, size of j into g of n. This inequality is easy because this is number of all representation and this is number of all disjoint representation, number of a maximal disjoint representation. So this is easy, but uh, can we bound this using j and something else? So now we want to again make a connection between j and this g. So again, the uh, no, how we do it is in a ad hoc way. It depending on the problem. So for this problem, we can try to consider the case that uh, this is n, and we have another representation which are not disjoint. Then this case, when x is same, then this two number adds up to n minus x. And number of such choices are related to the previous problem f. More specifically, we want to, if we know f of n minus x, then that helps us to count the number of such incidents. So, again, let f n be the number of representations of n as the sum of two elements of s. Then, what's the expectation of f n? So now our choice of the probability for this random set S is this. <coughs> then the expected number of Fn is half times summation of all pairs. You take x and y to the negative two thirds plus little of one. Then you can show that again this is more or less and to the minus one third plus eight over one. And what do we know? For n, again one, one n minus one, two n minus two, three n minus three, and n over two, n over two. I mean if we have to include this or not, depending on whether they are same, then we don't include. If they are different, then we include. But uh, that's minor difference. And the, the events that both of them here, the, the events that both of them are in S, the events both of them are in S, those events are all disjoint, all independent. <coughs> then, 
again here you can apply the previous theorem say this theorem showing that uh, if you want to count how many of these events actually occur and the probability that s of them occurs is actually same as in this case same as this disjoint i mean existence existence of disjoint family because all of them are disjoint if you take a maximal disjoint family here then that's the number of elements in that maximum disjoint family is exactly fn so we can directly use just this to actually show that the, the probability that fn is at least say 4 is at most expectation of fn to the 4 over 4 factorial using this then watch this we know the expectation so that's n to the four, uh, negative 4 over 3 plus 3 over 1 again this sums up to finite number so by Borel Cantelli lemma with probability 1 we have that f of n is m mod 3 so complement event for all sufficiently large n meaning that the for all i mean there is just n0 so that this holds for all n larger than n0 then we can also consider i mean this value f1 to f2 f3 and f n0 all of them have a specific value actually they are all smaller than n0 and after that it is m mod 3 so universally this implies that again with probability one there is c such that fn is smaller than c for all n so this is a event that happens with probability one and this is the event that happens with the probability one so if we draw a random set s then both events happen at the same time so that means there exists a set S such that Fn is M or C for all S, all N, sorry. And for all sufficiently large N, there exists uh, maximum disjoint family j of size between c1 prime log n and c2 prime log n so this maximum disjoint family is set of triples which are disjoint and sums up to n and this j is maximum disjoint family What we know is for every x, y, g triple in S with x plus y plus g is n, it must contain at least one of these and most three c two prime log n numbers consisting this j
So. But the number of triples x, y, g in S whose sum is n for a particular fixed x is f of n minus x which is at most c so what do we know if we count all the i mean triples in j and we want to also count the triples not in j which adds up to n and which belong to s then what we do is because this is maximum disjoint family, we choose one of these three C2 prime log n numbers, which is say x, and we express this n minus c into sum of y g. Then this x with y g forms a triple that we want to count, and such number of choice for y and g is c. So, and this counts, this must count all triples as adding up to n, which each coordinate number lies in S. So, there are at most 3 times c times c prime, c2 prime log n total representation of n into sum of three number. So g n is at least c1 prime log n and at most three c c2 prime log n and we let this be c2 and this be c1. Then we prove what we wanted to prove. So this is all for today and yeah, from next week we will move on to new chapter.